This is Petey Williams, the Canadian Destroyer, and you're in the Wrestling Epicenter. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Interactive Wrestling Radio right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com and YouTube. Today, we bring you an interview with a guest who's not been on our show ever before. We've had a lot of his colleagues on, Scott Damore, Eric Young from Team Canada, but never the Canadian Destroyer himself, never Maple Leaf Muscle. The one and only Petey Williams joins us. Petey returned to Impact Wrestling at a recent edition of Impact and will be competing for the X Division Championship in Canada on November 5th at Bound for Glory. Uh, we get to talk to him about a lot of great things, so I think you guys are really going to enjoy this interview. want to thank Impact Wrestling for helping set this interview up. Of course, everybody, please do check out Bound for Glory November 5th on Pay-Per-View and the Global Wrestling Network app, as you can also check out Impact every week on Pop TV every Thursday night. Let me talk to you, dummies. It's Eli Drake, and you're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com. And on the Newsmaker line with us is a gentleman who made a surprising return to Impact Wrestling just a few short weeks ago, formerly of Team Canada, the one and only Petey Williams. Mr. Williams, are you with us? Oh, how's she going, eh? I'm with you. <laughs> All right, man. We're so glad to have you on our show. Uh, we've had a lot of the guys from Team Canada on over the years. We've been going since 2002, but never had you on. So this is a first for us. So welcome aboard. Oh, thanks. You know, I just now I have to wonder what took you so long. Yeah. Well, we didn't really nah. think you were that. I'm just kidding. I was going to say we didn't think you were that good. <laughs> All right. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know what happened. But anyway, we're glad to have you. So speaking of what happened... You were out of wrestling. You completely left the wrestling industry and then came back in a very surprise appearance. What made you decide to step back in the ring? Um, you know, uh, Scott Demore just asked me to do that, and uh, kind of. That's the short story of it. The long story is, uh, you know, Scott Demore contacted me because he said that my name has been coming up, uh, you know, in in the creative meetings and stuff like that. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm just not interested in wrestling again. I said, I'm totally content with my life. I love, you know, my, my family, my kids, my wife, all that kind of stuff. And Scott Demore and I are, are, are very close. He's the guy that taught me, you know, trained me to be a wrestler and, uh, you know, got me into TNA, Impact Wrestling now and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, as we were talking and stuff like that, he just said, you know, how are the kids doing all that kind of stuff? And, you know, I thought maybe, you know, your your kids might want to see what their daddy used to do. And that kind of, you know, tugging at my heartstrings like that kind of just was like, uh, you know, so I actually brought up the question to my wife and I said, hey, listen to this ridiculous conversation I just had with Scott Damore. And I told her about it, rolling my eyes as I'm telling her about it. And she just looks me dead in the eye and goes, do it. No, do it. Yeah. And I'm like, no, time out. Are you serious? So, you know, she was like, uh, a big supporter of me going back. So uh, if she hadn't have supported it and all that kind of stuff, then I probably would have just been condensed with not wrestling again. So here we are. Very cool. Now you and I are probably around the same age and I'll tell you that we're both dads, but I'm not in the shape you are. What do you do when you're not wrestling? Um, well, you know, I was, I, I was what I called 
PD fat. Um, so, you know, I was probably about 10 pounds heavier um, than when I was at my wrestling weight and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I was still um, in shape and all that kind of stuff. But I wasn't as cut as when I was wrestling. So, you know, I still worked out and stuff like that, but I wasn't hitting the tanning bed or anything like that. I, you know, I was, I was saving myself from the skin cancer. I mean, I didn't need it anymore. I wasn't on TV every week. So, <laughs> um, but then when he contacted me, you know, and I wasn't looking at, you know, staying strict to my diet. I was still eating semi-clean. But if I want a pizza and cupcakes, I would have pizza and cupcakes. I mean, I was a retired wrestler. And then when he called me back, then it was like, you know, uh, back on the diet and at the gym and tanning and all that kind of stuff. So I just like kind of jumped right back into it. And originally I just wanted to do the impact wrestling stuff. That's it. That, that, that was my goal. But as soon as the rumor got out that I was back, you know, every promoter was like, Hey, can you work for me this weekend, this weekend, this, and now I don't have a uh, weekend off until December. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Speaking of uh, Impact Wrestling, that's the company you came back to, and that's the company you started with all the way back in the Wednesday night pay-per-view days. You really have seen this company go through all the phases, from the uh, from the beginning through the ups and downs, the peaks and valleys, and now you're back when it seems to be on the upswing again. What is your take on what's going on right now with Impact Wrestling? I, I think it is on the upswing, and this is why I think it was on upswing. If you look at, um, I want to say when, what year was it? Probably like right before we got on Spike TV the first time, we had a we were on Fox Sports Net, still on the upswing in 2004, and then I want to say 2005 we uh, our contract expired with Fox Sports Net, and we were moving on to a new television network. We we're shopping to see where we were going to go and stuff like that. During that time, we were our show was just kind of like on the internet until right, we got right. the Spike TV deal, and the guy writing the show at the time was uh, Scott Demore, and I felt like. It was some of the best, um, you know, wrestling writing that we ever had on the show. So once, you know, we got on Spike TV, some new writers came in and stuff like that. And then you had the Vince Russo's and whoever and whatnots and all that kind of stuff. And it kind of got saturated and everybody's different ideas, whatever. Now it's back. If you look at who the head writer is again, or one of, one of the people on the creative team, it's Scott Demore. Right. So I just think he has a brilliant mind for, for the wrestling business. He kind of knows what the fans want to see. He doesn't try to make it like super intricate and detailed and hard to follow and stuff like that. Very basic, but it's the basic emotions that all the wrestling fans feed off of. Scott Demore gives that to them. And I may, I think that's good wrestling television. So that's why I feel it's on the upswing. Um, you got kind of, and that was part of me coming back too. He said, here's the people that are in the creative team now. And it was all people that I liked and thought wrote good television back in 2004, 2005 when we were on our first upswing. Absolutely, absolutely. Man, uh, I, I remember those days when you guys were just on the Internet. And I remember me and my buddy Patrick, who used to co-host this show, we were the only two that I knew that watched him. We watched him and we'd say to people, hey, did you see that impact? That was really good. Oh, no, what channel is it on? And it's like, uh all right, but you guys landed on your feet, landed on Spike TV, and, man, there was a lot of great stuff with you. I'm going to just do a couple career highlights, and one of them had to be when you were paired with Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. Thoughts on working with Scott, and did you learn while working with such an icon? Um, yeah, I, I loved working with Scotty. I mean, it was just from from being in the ring with him as well as just being behind the scenes with him and how – uh, you know, he's not crazy, but he's just like, he, he's intense and stuff like that. And I just love talking to him and hearing his perspective on wrestling and everything that's going on and stuff like that. So it was great doing all that stuff. Um, and, and I thought it was, it, it, in my character, I got to be able to do something else. I got to be able to like dye my hair blonde and actually transition into the Maple Leaf muscle character and get away from like, Hey, I was in team Canada this entire time. So just to be able to develop a new character too was, was great. And and one of the things that I, um, before I came back and I was talking to Scott, the Moore and Sanjay Dutt, I said, here's some of the things I would like to do upon my return. And one of them was, I would like to get back together with Scott Steiner, just because it was probably some of the best times of my entire wrestling career so uh i mean it was great working with him man i'd love to do it again absolutely now you mentioned team canada i had it on my list above this one i was going to skip it but i'll go back to it 
Uh, some of the Team Canada guys have moved on from Impact to the WWE and are enjoying incredible success, especially Bobby Roode. Any thoughts on the success of you guys and what was so special about you guys that you all kind of, uh, well, most of you anyway, really made your mark on the industry in such unique ways? Um, I think it was uh, right, you know, place, right time kind of deal. Um, we were in Nashville, which is like, you know, a very southern type of, you know, old school wrestling. And then we were Team Canada from the north, talking with proper pronunciation and all that kind of stuff. So we were hated. So, I mean, we were super, super over the heels of the bad guys and people just hated us. Um, and I think that just, you know, we were able to to get in front of, you know, everybody on TV and stuff like that. They got to see that, you know, Canadians are good athletes and good wrestlers and stuff like that. And I think Scott picked, um, you know, four guys that were, you know, some of the best Canadian wrestlers in the world at the time. Um, you know, myself, Eric Young, Bobby Roode, and Johnny Devine. And, yeah, a lot of us, uh, you know, you, you see where Eric and Bobby are now. Um, I think I, sometimes I feel like I retired a little bit too early um, in my wrestling career. Uh, I should have maybe I just went all the way through. And, you know, it would have been interesting to see where I would at, be at now if I hadn't took that hiatus in that three-year retirement. Kind of a stupid question, but why did you take that hiatus? Um, you know, I, I thought that I was – I, I did everything I wanted to do in wrestling. Um, I kind of escaped the wrestling business without any long-term, like, uh, like super, you know, life-threatening injuries or anything like that. Um, so I said, you know, it's, it's a good time. I'm still young. Um, I can still do other things. I could enjoy my my family and all that kind of stuff. I only had one kid at the time, and then I was uh, I retired like pretty much one month before my my uh, second daughter was born. Um, and I said, I said, this is, this is, I'm good. I'm good. I made my mark on wrestling. I did something that a lot of people say they, they couldn't do. I, I created something. I can create the Canadian destroyer move. That's my know, next like, question. I, I will ask okay. about that in a sec. <laughs> um, I, you know, when I'm, you know, right now I'm 36, when I'm like 70 years old and I'm watching, uh, whatever wrestling show is the wrestling show at the time when I'm seven years old with my, with my kids, my grandkids, stuff like that, I'll be watching on TV. And I know some kid, um, he's probably not even born yet. We'll be doing the Canadian destroyer on television. And I just say, Hey, you know, I created that and that'll be something that lives forever long past. Like when I'm dead, that move will still be around. And I, I don't think too many wrestlers can say they left their mark on wrestling forever. Exactly. I was watching an episode of Lucha underground and the, a guy hit a Canadian destroyer and Matt striker on commentary screams, Mexican destroyer. And I thought, Oh, wow. Okay. Um, my thought, I guess my question was going to be, how is it? Is it very cool to know that what you did create there is going to be borrowed almost in the same vein as the DDT or the diamond cutter? Um, at the time when I created, it, I didn't think so. I mean, you know, what do they say? Like imitation is the best form of flattery. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I see guys like Ray Mysterio and Buff Bagwell, guys that I used to watch when I was a kid do the move now thinking it's like, you know, so cool. And then, everybody like every single uh wrestler does it on the independent circuit now and at least it was not done as much as it is done now until after i was retired and now it seems like now that i'm coming back i'm seeing it less and less as well because people are like oh Phoebe's back it's his move so th they know it's my move um, there's a respect factor yeah I, I i would think it is a respect factor and it's really funny because i was just talking like last month was Sammy Callahan, and I didn't realize this. Um, Sammy Callahan used to wrestle as Solomon Crow in, in WWE. Right. He said, Jeremiah you know, man, Crane and Lucha. Yeah, oh, there you go. Um, there you so go. very well known in the wrestling world. But he said, hey, you know, I don't think you understand. You you started a revolution in professional wrestling. He says, you know, I he's like, I run my own show, and, you know, there's like four Canadian destroyers in the first match of my show, and everybody's, you know, doing it and all this kind of stuff. And, He's like, you're the first one that took a video game move and made it reality. You're the first one to ever do that. And he <laughs> even told me, he was like, hey, I used to, me and my buddies used to get the Wednesday pay-per-views for Impact to watch you do the Canadian Destroyer. So uh -huh. I didn't realize all this stuff until I, and he probably would have never told me if we weren't sitting next to each other signing autographs. But oh, I mean, that's wow. cool to hear that, 
that, you know, I, I've had an impact on so many wrestlers' lives pretty much. Very cool. I got to ask you a question, and it kind of popped into my mind while we were talking. Uh, there was one match that Impact Wrestling has become known for, and that is the Ultimate X match. But there was one match I remember in particular where you had a problem with the X. Any any memories of that match with the the X that wouldn't stay up? Yeah, um, I, re I remember that match. And, you know, Ultimate X matches at first, I, I enjoyed doing them because they were so unique. And now it seems like they're they're done a lot. I mean, I still in they're, they're still a spectacle to see. It's just it's more and more difficult for the talent, the workers, the wrestlers to put together these matches and not duplicate what you've seen in the past. Um, so they're very tough to do. Um, I, I don't mind doing them, but they're they're tougher nowadays. And I remember that match because they rigged up the X with I think like tie straps or something. And then when we were falling from the X, it would. Pretty much, it was breaking the tie straps, and then it would kind of break the momentum of the match. And this right. is, I think, live on pay-per-view at the time. And yeah. the stage hands have to set up a ladder, climb up, rehang the X. That happened a couple times. And then I, I figured, I'm like, you know what? I said, people see it falling. Why not, you know, kind of improvise or whatever? And then I think uh, Chris Saban or something fell from the X, and it was jiggling. So I just went under there like a center fielder, like, oh, I'm going to catch it, you know? Yeah. Not thinking it was going to fall, and it fell right into my hand, and I was like, oh, no. Uh -oh. Like, what do I do? Like, I'm shocked. And Scott Demore just ran in the ring and goes, celebrate, you won. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So he was right there on my side saying, like, don't act like an idiot. You won, so celebrate. You know, we'll, we'll take care of this later. And Whoa, was, uh, was that not supposed to be the finish? No, no. Oh, I mean, okay. no, not at all. I, the, the X wasn't supposed to fall in my hands. I mean, I was supposed <laughs> to go up and get it. So it, it, it kind of bothered me because, I mean, those those matches are tough. Uh, right. Not only to put together, but they're tough on the body. And then we had to go out there the next night and do a whole brand new match, new ideas and everything, put our bodies on the line um, because of, of, you know, the X malfunctioning. And then, you know, we did the finish that was supposed to happen the previous night. Ah, okay, cool. See, I yeah. did not so even realize that. Yeah, you just, you never know what's going to happen in those Ultimate X matches. That's why they're so special. Very good. Well, we talked a lot about Team Canada, but Canada is in the news, and that's because you guys are heading up to Ottawa, Canada, for Bound for Glory. You're going to be challenging for the X Division Championship. Thoughts on performing in front of a Canadian crowd again and also Impact seemingly taking a lot of their shows up above the border? Yeah, I mean, I've only wrestled for Impact, well, twice. Um, north of the border there in Canada. Um, and it's going to be great to be home. I remember we had a house show in London one time. I was there. It was a great reaction and reception that the fans gave me. I really appreciated that. And then the following night was a pay-per-view um, just outside of Toronto. And, man, I, I got goosebumps. I remember when I walked up, my music hit, and there was like, I don't know, like 4,000 people in the crowd. I don't know. It was a packed crowd. And as soon as my music hit, the place went nuts. And I'm looking at signs that said, like, if P I was ex-division champion at the time. Um, if PD loses, we riot, and, and PD for prime minister, and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, wow, because I've always played a bad guy on TV because I was Canadian. And then when I walked out there and in front of my own people, and they just went nuts, and I was like, oh, this is, this is phenomenal. This is everything I've ever wanted when I became a professional wrestler. Um, so, I mean, it's going to be great to go back up there. Uh, uh, you know, the Aberdeen Center, that's, that's going to be a good venue to go. And, uh, and all the TV tapings after that, I mean, I think we got five TV tapings. So it's, it's going to be uh, a good, a great change of pace, I would say. Excellent, excellent. Can we get used to seeing Petey Williams? Or is Petey Williams just back for a short time? Um, that's a good question. I mean, you're going to have to stay tuned. I mean, obviously, I'll be at Bound for Glory. Um, I can confirm that I will be at the the following set of impact tapings. Um, and then after that, um, I haven't discussed with, uh, with, with management, what's going to go on with my character and myself. So I think once, once that t set of TV tapings is done, I'll have a better understanding of, uh, what's going to come next. Excellent. Well, I hope you stick around. Hey man, I thank you for taking the time to do this with us before I let you go. Can I ask for one little favor from you? And you probably Ooh. already know what it is. Oh, what's uh, that? Do you mind giving me a station ID, just saying this is Petey Williams and you're in the wrestling epicenter? Yep. All right. Are we okay. not ready? 
I'll count you down in five. I'll do the Wayne's World thing. In five, four, three, two. This is Petey Williams, the Canadian Destroyer, and you're in the wrestling epicenter. Enjoying what you're hearing? Be sure and check out WrestlingEpicenter.com on social media at Facebook.com slash Wrestling Epicenter. On Twitter at James Epicenter. And of course, WrestlingEpicenter.com for 24-hour news updates, our interview archives, and all the other information you've come to expect from the Wrestling Epicenter. <laughs>